We're back and we're going to open up the levels that we downloaded to begin with the hour of code and the Stackobot project files. This time we've saved each one. We uh, up versioned it to 5.2 and we saved and I shut everything down and restarted the computer as well. So now if I go to the library up here on the Unreal Engine, you should have this uh, Stackobot now says 5.2 and the unreal learning kit says 5.2 as well so let's see now if i we'll start off with the learning kit as the easier of the two and we'll see how well this loads up it's initializing and this time it blew right through the 45 percent so those shaders I believe they create the temporary cache file, so they read all the shaders and save them out. So when you saved everything after you reopened it, now the level opened in less than a minute. And all the textures popped in as well. So definitely that was a lot easier. I also added in this here, the there's the block game, there's the learning kit, and there's also the robots. And I still have to go in here and play at the shaders output. That's okay, because now what I can do is I can go over to the... Uh, and it does it does close the Epic Game Launcher, the last few versions, which is really kind of odd and, and kind of annoying. Because they got me so used to using it all the time, and now it, they shut it down each time after you open a project, which... No, I went to um, decide when it closes. Don't close it down for me if I'm still using it. So we'll go back to the library, and now I can grab the Stacklebot as well so I can bounce between the projects and I'm going to also look at the implementing level design and uh, the fundamentals there's a lot to look at the content examples I should say but same thing with Stackobot it's already at 93% and good to go so open it save it close down restart your computer and next time you load it up it should load up really fast so before meetings, if you're going to do a group project, uh, if you're in a class before class, make sure you do all this beforehand. And as the instructor, I, I tend to forget sometimes. And you'll see everything's animating now. So same thing, we can go in and we can turn off the real time. And we can go into the settings and we could uh, turn down the, the scalability or turn them up. So for this one, um, I'm going to roll the dice a little bit with the computer. I'll go ahead and crank it all the way up to cinematic level. And I'm going to leave the uh, real time off though, just so I can see. The difference here and over here everything's running pretty smooth so i'm going to go back to settings here to scalability and we'll leave these at cinematic and think for a second the material material quality is still at high so i'm not quite sure why that cranking that up to cinematic doesn't automatically do the material but all good uh there's a shader so we can look at these two different projects now and dismiss those errors let's see which ones go to which project there we go so we have the two projects and now that we have these projects loaded um, and it's going to kill my cpu so i'm not going to do too much and so i'm going to go ahead and actually turn these back off just to make sure i'm not rolling the dice too much here again that's uh control r for real time let's go ahead and look at the level design one as well so now, you know, I just double clicked that. So that's going to automatically launch to 5.0 because I haven't uninstalled it yet. And you can see the total installed engine versions right now is at 114 gigabytes. So I should have opened, uh, launched 5.2 and then opened it through there. So let me do that. So this time I launched uh, 5.2 and I'm going to go into implementing level design. We <laughs> open that up and again, more options, convert in place. It's really simple kit and it's great because it gives you the grid and lets you kind of measure out and um, build out levels in a white box or gray box fashion, which is how I learned and I think most studios and professionals have done uh, since Unreal 2 and 3 and you know doing Unreal Script and then Kismet. When we block our levels in, uh, you want the grid on there so you can really get a sense for your uh, heights, for jump heights, for crouching, for cover, 
uh, for where you're placing objects. So when you go to open levels, uh, usually things are in the map. So go to the blockout gem here. And I'll give you the resource. But this is a really typical model kit. And you see that it's color coded quite nicely. So we looked at the Hour of Code model kit. This is an even more stripped down version. But this is all you need when you're first building out and blocking in your level. You're testing uh, the gameplay itself, the movement, the the flow of the game, uh, where you're going to have, you know, placeables that are interactable. So you see shape cylinder and the door and the wall, you know, something that can be broken or something that might blow up and do damage. You see the lighting in the sky is still really basic. You know, having a switch for opening and closing doors, which we'll do in the introduction to scripting class. So this should be really helpful. So what you can do is uh, we can go in here and to the content folder and we can grab uh, what you need from this for the, um, and to bring into the other level and we can actually migrate these objects into the uh, Hour of Code um, learning kit project and we can also bring these into the stack robot so what that'll let you do is gray box out and white box quickly so you're not getting crushed by graphics that get in the way of the fundamental uh, skeleton and framework of your level so this is a really useful project and we'll look at a few other options as well